There are different crypto mining projects. ASIC mining, CPU mining, GPU mining. These are more traditional. And then we also have IoT mining, such as Helium. Personally, I think Helium mining is more difficult and more technical than most of the other ones. And this is because for ASIC mining, GPU mining, CPU mining, most of the time you can just copy what other people are doing and then it will work for you. You'll be making stable profits and such. Proof of work mining is very stable and predictable. There are websites out there such as what to mine will tell you if you have a let's say rtx 3070 gpu how much you'll be making in a day it doesn't work like that for helium mining currently as the making of this video there are over 300,000 hotspots out there in order to earn good rewards you have to make sure your hotspot setup is optimized for your own environment so today we're talking about 10 things i wish i knew when i started mining hnt by the way this is modal tech here we cover hot tech product services and projects if you're new to the channel please subscribe and like our videos for every like we receive one dollar will be donated to a charity of our choice each month you can check out our previous month donations under our community tab on our youtube channel also feel free to follow us on twitter and join our discord community i have those links in the description below without further ado let's get this started a lot of new amateur miners or maybe investors trying to get into helium would ask hey is it profitable and this is something i wish i knew actually before i started helium mining in my opinion helium mining is the most profitable mining currently if you have the right setup it's so profitable that you're be able to make your investment back in a month or two if you have a rent business before you know that if a business can recoup their initial investment in two or three years that would be considering really good if you're into gpu mining or asic mining you know that based on the current market price it's about a year or two before you get your roi which is return on investment most of the heat and miner retail price is about $500 to $600. In the future, we also have light hotspots. Those ones will cost significantly less. And of course, there's shortage on the chips that are required to make these helium miners. Most people are having problems getting these helium miners at retail price. If we go onto eBay, most of them are around $1,000. If you have a decent location and have an okay setup, it will be no problem for you to make about one HNT a day. And as the making of this video, one HNT is about $40. In a month, you will be making $1,200. If you bought a hotspot on eBay, for a thousand dollars then you already got your money back and after the first month everything is pure profit and something good to know is that when you're mining helium you're actually not mining helium you're mining bones there are 100 million bones in one HNT currently and mention that is because helium is talking about redenomination you'll still be mining the same amount of bones but what they're changing is the bones to HNT ratio instead of having 100 million bones to one HNT now it will be 100,000 bones per HNT and this is actually not a new concept if you look at Bitcoin the Bitcoin base unit is actually Satoshi there's 100 million satoshis in one bitcoin and they do this is because computers are actually really dumb they can't figure out all these decimals and that is why when they're building the algorithms they had to make a base unit with a bunch of zeros and this way will make it easy for the computer number two which miners to buy and where to find them there are more and more hotspots coming online there are also other hotspots already sending their applications it's kind of very difficult to track which ones there are obviously there's a big ones like rack sense cap bobcats of course so all of these information is actually open source in the description below i will give you a link and in this documents these are all the miners that are currently approved and also you'll be able to see the ones that are in review or sending their application this way you can get yourself ready and you can actually do your research and find out a contact information for these new vendors because in the application to become a new manufacturer or vendor it is required by the helium community to have a discord for the manufacturer themselves and provide good customer service once you've joined their community it will be easier for you to find out the timelines for their devices and at the moment these miners are slightly different from each other however the performance are quite similar so there's really no need to ask for one over another really it's which one you can get first just get that one number three how much data does it use in order to run a helium hotspot you do have to have internet 
most people just plug into their home internet. Some people do run 4G, LTE, or 5G SIM cards. And it's kind of important to know how much data these hotspots are using. I know some people are using 4G or 5G unlimited data SIM card. Most of these SIM cards actually will throttle your bandwidth after a certain amount of data usage. And this may hinder your hotspot's performance. So here I have done a test. I have tunneled one of my hotspot's traffic through a VPN and I'm just monitoring the traffic on this VPN. This gives me a good idea in the past month how much data it has used. As you can see, in the past few days, we had some outage on the blockchain, and that's why you, you see very minimum amount of data. And uh, you, you do see, for example, November 16th, there's still 114 megabytes, and that's because there's something I'm running on this VPN that, that's using about 100 per day. But outside of that, if you look at... Uh, these days, there's a flat about uh, four gigabytes per day. And then after the recover of the network, you will see about shooting up to two, two and a half gigabytes a day. And this is definitely more than what I remember the Helium network, Helium hotspot used to use. So if you have everything together in the past 30 days, it has used 150, about 150 gigabytes of data. And this actually brought to my attention by one of the cellular professionals in my community who also deploys a large amount of helium hotspots. And he actually mentioned to me that, hey, have you looked at the data in the past month and what is going on with the network and such? It's using way more than it, it normally does. Because in the past, one helium hotspot used about 20 gigabytes of data. Just a, That's just a few months ago. Uh, but right now, apparently it's over 100 gigabytes. But also, there's a lot of factors we have to consider. And one is the larger blockchain size, and that means we have more stuff to sync. And this will actually change when we move to the light hotspots, because when the light hotspots come online, we don't need to sync blockchain anymore. And also, Helium has been pushing out a lot of changes regarding POC 11, proof of coverage version 11, and then a bunch of different firmwares and rerolling back firmware and stuff and for these different hotspots the vendor will also have to push different fix for the firmware so it's very common to see there are days you'll be using more and the days you'll be using less with that in mind now you can plan your helium hotspot deployment accordingly number four antenna choices most people are actually using omnidirectional antennas because they're easy to install and they give a 360 degrees coverage there is nothing wrong with that however based on my previous knowledge and experience also after talking to some rf and cellular professionals i found out that setting up different signal sectors and using directional antennas will actually provide better coverage and as a return, you'll be earning more rewards. And especially with upcoming 5G antennas, these are actually all directional antennas. And if you look at most of the cell phone towers, you will see that these are panels. Most of these panel antennas covers about 120 degrees, and there will be three of these antennas covering all 360 degrees. The directional antenna will amplify your gains, and that's for both transmitting and receiving. With that, you'll be able to reach out further, uh, with POC 11, this may change, but nobody really knows what the effect on these antennas are. We will have to wait and see on that one. And of course, in order to set up different sectors, you will need multiple hotspots. And this is some people may say having two or three hotspots in a hex on the map will reduce your reward scale. That is correct. That brings us to the next point. Number five, you can actually move your hotspot on the map. There are tools out there such as Hotspotty will give you a good idea of different hacks, different reward skills, and it gives you a good idea where you can put your miner. As long as you're not moving your miner too far away from its actual location, it will one, protect your own privacy. Two, you will be able to avoid a lower reward scale. You definitely don't want to move your miners too far away from you though, and because you'll be getting a lot of invalid witnesses and that means you won't be getting as much rewards and it's also very important to set up vpns if you're running multiple miners so you have different ip addresses and you can avoid your miner being relayed while you're running multiple hotspots and covering different sectors from one location i have made a video on how to do this in the past i will link the video in the description below number seven helium 
staking actually gives you a large amount of rewards. Back in the good old days before validators came online, there's a chance a regular hotspot will be able to join this consensus group. If you're in this group, you'll be validating the integrity of the network. As a result, you'll be earning a lot more. However, after we started validators, only validators could join consensus group. And this is because as the blockchain grew, the hotspots are not going to be powerful enough to perform as a validator anymore. To stake a validator, you would need 10 thousand hnts and if i remember this right when a validator started hnt was around 15 dollars per so that would be 150 thousand us dollars for one validator of course you don't have to do this yourself you can have some other friends or you can even start a community pool for validators so people can do partial stake with the current amount of validators you're earning about eight percent apy and if you started a validator back then with 150 thousand dollars at the current hnt price every year be making about forty thousand dollars and that's about almost 30 percent apr right there and there are more and more companies becoming partners with the heatm network for example microsoft is one and also recently dish network also joined their 5g initiatives personally i view hnc staking as a very stable way of gaining some interest passive income and of course i'm not a financial advisor and this is only my personal opinion should be used for entertainment purpose only next thing is cashing out a lot of people in my community have asked Ask, hey, how do I buy HNT or how do I cash out my HNT? Since HNT is own blockchain, is not a layer two solution on Bitcoin or on Ethereum or on some other chains, it currently doesn't have any bridge with other chains. However, they are working on that. There are not many places where you can buy in or cash out. So I went on to marketcap.com. Here you see the biggest markets that supports HNTs. And the biggest one is Binance or Binance US. You will be able to buy and sell HNTs. Personally, I have have used binance.us and also i've used crypto.com exchange at one point crypto.com did support hnt partially i believe they are fully supporting hnt now and just so you know when you're using these exchanges it's always a good idea to make a small transaction first before you make the full transaction sometimes these centralized exchanges do freeze your fund due to different reasons and i believe most of these exchanges are kyc and that means know your customer that means you will have to provide your real identity in order to trade uh, most likely in order to cash out from these platforms for HNT. Number nine, it's actually a good idea if you start a business for HNT mining. I'm actually not very familiar with other countries. I live in the US and by the way, I'm not a tax planner. I'm not a tax professional. I don't provide any financial advice or legal advice. This is just something I do. I'm just sharing the information. You may find this information beneficial to yourself. Since HNT is very profitable and some people are actually buying a bunch of them and uh, setting them up at their friend's place, their relative's place, essentially they're managing a whole fleet and that will require you to install a bunch of things like buying antennas uh, or paying people for installation or driving to different locations sometimes 100 miles away just to do a assessment paying for internet your solar panels if you're doing a remote setup or your 4g 5g data these all cost money and they can be claimed as expenses plus you'll be getting tax credit for every mile you're driven on your car which is always a good idea when you're doing a long trip to a friend's place where you are doing a assessment at their house to see maybe that could be a potential location for a good HNT setup. Again, this is just something I do. Please do your own research. You know, it wouldn't be really nice to claim that brand new Tesla Model X on your tax. Again, I'm not a financial advisor or tax professional. Please do your own research. Last thing, open source tools are your friends. There are actually a lot of tools now. I will show you one place you can get them. If you go to Helium Explorer, it looks like we're having some API issues that is very common. They've been trying to fix this in the past week now. At least we are getting rewards. So on the top right, you see tools. You click on that and you will see there's a bunch of very interesting tools. You will see the Bobcat Diagnoser and you'll see some other stuff dy rewards report if you're interested in tax there's a few of them helium tax this is a helium tax is a free tool and uh, there's some other stuff helium vision is a paid service 
uh, planning service and also you also have the sense cap dashboard which is one of my favorite dashboards hotspotty hotspot rf they can give you some simulation on how much rewards you'll be earning and if you're tech savvy you can always query its free open source api there is a lot of good information you can find on there all right guys there's a lot more things i can talk about we'll save those ones for the next time and if you found value in this video please give it a like and subscribe thank you very much this is moto tech i will see you next time